Well, a surprise good evening to you from my car. You may wonder why I'm broadcasting uh, at this time of night and not in the morning. Unfortunately, I'm not available tomorrow morning to, to have the time to, to, uh, to do the upload. So I thought what I've got I'll share with you tonight. And I was inspired, actually, by the fact that my wife uh, visits the Anglican Church on a Sunday morning. And uh, I don't go, I must be really honest. And uh, she was uh, listening to Isaiah chapter 52. But uh, they didn't actually expound on it. I know those of you that know the Anglican Church, maybe if you're in America, it'll be the Episcopal Church. Um, it's a very set service. You go in and you have uh, your hymns and your readings and your various prayers. And of course, the readings are not expounded on. Uh, somebody will come up and, and just read a passage of scripture. And it's often not referred to at all. So I took a look at it. And uh, it's Isaiah 52. And uh, it's a, re a really beautiful scripture I wanted to share with you. Because it, it precedes Isaiah 53, the famous Isaiah 53, the, uh, the um, prophecy of the suffering servant, our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's interesting that it precedes it because it, it provides a, a really good lead up to that famous scripture, which, of course, uh, amongst the Jewish people, it, Isaiah 53 is not read simply because uh, they don't believe that, that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah. So uh, let's have a look at this and see what the Lord has to say. I think it's a beautiful piece of uh, prophecy. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. See that sense of getting ready, isn't it? You put your best garments on because you're about to, to experience something wonderful. A celebration, a wedding. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Very definite, isn't it? Putting on the garments because the time has come when only the pure and only the holy will be allowed into Jerusalem. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. No more captivity. Israel went into captivity twice. And she's about to go into some serious uh, captivity, some serious situations in these coming days before the Messiah returns. And um, this is a promise. This is a promise to the Jewish people, a promise to Israel. And those of us, of course, that are not Jewish, I am, but uh, those of you that are not, join together, grafted into the olive tree. Take this for yourself. For thus saith the Lord, verse 3, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Redeemed without money. Remember what it says later on in Isaiah. Buy, come buy and eat without money. The good things of the Lord, those are the things we can never buy with money. No, nothing can we exchange for the good things of God. That's what it's saying here. And we were redeemed without money. The world doesn't understand that. Everything's based on currency and finance. But we're going to be free of that system. For thus saith the Lord, the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Without cause. God knew it. God realized that it was happening. He knew it was going to happen. But God had a plan. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord? What have I here? That my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them Make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. The people of Israel, the people of God are surrounded. 
They're made to howl. What an agony that is when you, those of you that have ever heard the howl of, of, a, of a wolf or the howl of an animal, the pain and the ang anguish that it goes through. And God has to put up with this blasphemy of his name. The wonderful creator, the creator God, his name blasphemed, trodden in the mud. Therefore my people shall know my name. This is God's promise to his people. They shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. That day, take notice of that day, that day that is coming, that day when the Lord reveals himself in physical presence, and we see his glory. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publish peace, that bringeth good things, good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. How beautiful are the mountains of the feet of him. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Messiah, a prophecy of the Messiah, hundreds and hundreds of years before he was even to appear. This is the beauty of the scripture. This is what needs to be brought out. Publishing peace, the true peace, not the peace and safety of the world, not the false peace of the Antichrist, the true peace that brings good tidings, brings the gospel of good, that publishes salvation, Yeshua, salvation. It will be seen across the world that God reigns, that he is the true God. Verse 8, thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. No more dissent, no more argument, no more questions, no more disagreement. We shall see eye to eye. When we see him, we shall see him as he is. We shall see him in truth and in power. I'm just reminded of that chorus. I don't know if I'm going to get the words right if I sing it. Um, I think it went like this. How lovely are the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news, announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. Our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. I think that's how it went. He reigns, he reigns supreme, he will reign supreme, and he will tread on the head of the snake and the scorpion. Verse 9. Excuse me a second, let me just get that back right. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. There it is. The redemption of Jerusalem. That's God's plan, isn't it? That's where the Messiah will reign from in the Millennial Kingdom. This is what it's all about. It's about the Millennial Kingdom. It's about the coming of the Messiah, the true King. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. All the nations will see, will be, the truth will be laid bare. That's what God is saying here. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth will see Jesus for who he really is. That's a wonder, isn't it? No corner of the earth will be darkened. There'll only be light. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Everything holy is what it's saying here. We, the vessels of the Lord too, will be holy. We will no more know no sin. We will be cleansed fully, knowing the truth and 
looking the truth in the eye with the Lord smiling upon us verse 12 for you shall go you shall not go out with haste not go out by flight for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your real wood God going before God going behind completely surrounding us he goes before us doesn't he he encumbrances around all, all of us what a wonder that is verse 13 behold my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high my servant the suffering servant the Messiah shall be exalted and be very high higher than anything higher than anyone that has ever tried to usurp the position of Lord and King you know of course Lucifer has tried to usurp that position from the very start of creation where he will be brought low as many were astonished at thee his visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men a direct reference there to the crucifixion a marred visage his face so marred this is even before Isaiah 53 we see this this reference to the marring of the face of God and so it goes and here's the atonement verse 15 so shall he sprinkle many nations you'll be sprinkling with his blood many nations many that come up out of those nations that will repent and believe the gospel the kings shall shut their mouths at him for that which had not been told them shall they see the gospel goes out to all corners of the earth as it says Jesus said this gospel shall be preached to all nations and then the end will come and that which they had not heard shall they consider then the chapter goes on to to Isaiah 53 how the Messiah grows up like a tender plant and it mentions there again that he has no beauty that he should be desired but that inner beauty that beauty of the spirit which is now of course available to us and that's the wonder of it all so um, I just commit that scripture to you tonight and uh, say to you if you're feeling down if you're feeling a little hopeless if you're feeling a little despairing if you're in the UK and it's night time it's just been raining here actually now and um, whatever circumstance you're going through know this that the salvation is being published the Messiah is coming deliverance is on the way and we must hold on but it will be tough at times but we're called to endure to the end and we will be saved and no one and nothing can pluck us out of his hand and all the nations will see the salvation of our God I'll see you on Tuesday morning and have a blessed evening and a blessed day tomorrow.